Seems like every gaming laptop we review has an i7 processor, a GTX 1060, 16 gigs of RAM, FHD screen, and an SHD HDD combo. Well, this one is no different. Because the Acer Aspire V Nitro also has an i7 processor, a GTX 1060, exactly 16 gigs of dual channel RAM, an FHD screen, and plenty of storage options. But enough with the specs, let's see if this is really the laptop you should consider buying over the other laptops that we have reviewed until now. Hello everyone, I'm Pratima Adhikari and this is the Acer Aspire V Nitro review. Starting things off with the build, it's fine but has this unusual lining texture at the top which is a real dust magnet. On the other hand, the bottom has a rubberish feel to it. Although our review unit has a huge black edition written on it, there are portions that are silver which feels quite contradictory. What I would like to acknowledge is that the red backlit below it seems cool. In my experience of using the Nitro, there were minimum creaks with a decent amount of screen and chassis flex. I would give it a 6 out of 10 partially because the hinge was a bit wobbly and creaking. Now, moving on to the performance, day-to-day -day tasks are a breeze which I would say is mandatory for a laptop that pretty much costs over 1 lakh. The gaming performance is also very good and most of the games run at well over 60 frames per second with settings turned up high at native Full HD resolution. Even the most demanding PUBG was well playable at around 60 FPS at medium settings. But for best results, I cranked it down to very low settings and then I experienced stable gaming at 70 FPS. Similarly, FIFA 18 ran well over 150 FPS, even with everything at the maximum settings possible. Likewise, Fortnite crossed 60 FPS at Ultra with fluctuation at around 70 to 80 frames per second. Rocket League pretty much hold its 130 FPS mark, while sometimes peaking over 150 FPS. And finally, the not so scary Residential Evil 7 ran at around 80 frames per second. In a similar manner, we also played the Dota 2 which was well over 100 FPS. As for the thermals, the laptop did pretty well, a solid B in my books. However, 30 minutes of gaming and the temperature rose to more than 50 degrees Celsius, where the heat was mostly felt at the top part of the keyboard, so you might not notice it so much. The fans on the other hand are a bit loud, so I would recommend using headphones while gaming. Talking about throttling, yes, games throttle a bit more when put in comparison to other laptops. My one hour marathon of PUBG saw me start from medium settings at around 60 FPS go all the way to very low just so I could still play at above 60 FPS. I have faced the same problem on the Dell 7577 and MSI that we tested before. Seeing laptops throttle like this, I did miss my time with the Acer Predator 15. The top holds a 15.6 inch display with resolutions of 1920 by 1080 and a maximum refresh rate of 60 Hz. It covers about 85% of sRGB and 56% of Adobe RGB color spectrum. In case you want a more color accurate display, get the 4K variant capable of about 98% of the sRGB color coverage and 62% of Adobe RGB. Our 1080p version was a bit on the cooler side, which was nice. Brightness hovered at around 300 nits for 1080p version and 250 nits for the 4K variant. If I had to rank all the laptops we have tested up until now, this I think will come at a close second. I felt it produced better colors which was more pleasing to the eye compared to other laptops which had about the same amount of color coverage. If you are wondering which came first on my not so professional display ranking, it would certainly be the Acer Predator 15 which had one of the best keyboards we have reviewed up until now. This one has a not so good nor so satisfying keyboard with a messy key layout which I got used to with time. What I could not stand was the short key travel alongside a mushy feeling at the end. I am among the people who prefers a more tactile and clicky feel. Also, this is a very thick laptop. I don't understand why Acer has not seen to this aspect of the build. The laptop also has a red backlit which looks cool as I already said, but I was expecting a different color since it's a black edition laptop. The trackpad on the other hand seems acceptable with the Windows precision tracking mechanism. It's plastic, but the tracking seems decent. Also, the fingerprint resides on the trackpad itself. It's decently fast and I have completely stopped typing a password every time I open this laptop, so you can imagine how fast it is. Connectivity wise, it uses Qualcomm's dual band AC Wi Fi and Bluetooth 4.2. I did not face any connectivity issues. 
Port selection was a bit different with the power plug residing on the right, followed by the Ethernet, HDMI USB 3.0, USB-C and again USB 3.0. On the left, you get a 2 USB 3.0, a mic and audio port and an SD card reader. The onboard speakers are decently loud and clear. They, however, lack a bit of bass. I would still recommend you use headphones while gaming, but if a bit of fan noise does not bother you, you are all good to go. As for the unplugged life, the 70Wh battery pushes about 4-5 to five hours of normal usage on a single charge. And if you plan to game on battery, I would say you don't expect anything over an hour. The laptop comes with 1TB hard disk when you purchase it for a price of Rs 1,35,000. You do have the option to offer an SSD if your budget allows. Solid state drive costs around 6 to 7,000 more, but the performance boost is worth the extra cash. So, for about 1,37,000, you get an i7 7700HQ processor, 6GB of GTX 1060, a very nice display panel, and 1TB of storage. So, I think it's a solid buy, just don't forget to slap an SSD in it. For the price, you also get the Dell 7577, which has similar specs but a better build. There is also the Helios 300, which is a worthy alternative. Other than that, the only laptop I can think of is Acer's own Predator 15, which gives a better package in general. But you will have to shell out 30,000 more. So tell us what you think about the Acer Aspire V Nitro in the comment section below. That's it for the review, and I'll see you next time.